Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all creatures, and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today is the first episode in the series of the Fiqh Shafi'i, insha'Allah. We ask Allah to make it easy on us and make it blessed as well. In case you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. In case you have any ways to improve this series, please don't hesitate to tell us. Please prepare your notebooks and start taking notes from now. We will start inshallah with the types of water. We have three types of water. The first type is the purifying water. And the Arabic equivalent for that is tahur. So purifying means tahur. The second type of water is the pure water. And the Arabic equivalent for that is tahir. And the third type of water is the impure water and the Arabic equivalent is najis. Let's start with the first type of water which is the purifying one. So the purifying water or ma'un tahur, it means the water that is pure in itself and it purifies others. Okay, so notice that it's pure in itself and it purifies others okay so this is the type of water you should use to lift a state of ritual impurity whether a minor impurity or major impurity so this is the type of water you use to make ghusl or to make wudu and also this is the type of water you use to remove filth okay so the purifying water or the ma'un tahur is the water that we use to lift a state of ritual impurity to make ghusl to make wudu to remove najasa and so on examples of this water is rain so rain is purifying water and also the sea water is actually a purifying water due to the saying of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the sea huwa tahur ma'u which means its water is purifying. The second type of water is the pure water or al-ma'u al-tahir. Pure water means what? It means it's water that is pure in itself, but it doesn't purify other things. So the water itself is pure, but you cannot use it to purify yourself. Such as the used water or what we call al-ma al-musta'mal. The used water is, for example, when you take a bath, uh, you cannot use the same water in which you used to take a bath to make wudu. This wudu will be invalid because you cannot use the used water. The water itself is still pure, okay? But it's tahir. That means it's pure in itself, but it doesn't purify others. Al-ma'u tahir or the pure water can also be identified in another way. It's the water that is mixed with something else that is pure, such as flour or saffron. And here we have two cases. The first case, if it's largely changed, so it's no longer termed water. So if it's largely changed by something that is pure or tahir, it is still tahir but you cannot use it to make wudu. But if it's slightly changed with flour, saffron, tree leaves or something uh, that is pure, it's fine and you still can use it to make wudu or to make ghusl, such as the purifying water. And we will mention more details when we identify and say the definition of the third type. We'll start taking examples in all cases again to make everything clear. Now let's talk about the third type of water, which is the impure water or what we call ma'un najis. Impure water is the water that is neither purifying nor pure. So if the water is neither purifying nor pure, it is impure. Now here comes the indecisive question, which is how can we know if the water is purifying, pure or impure? In another way, if we have some water, how can we know if we can use it to make ghusl or to make wudu or not? The first case is, if the water is less than 216 liters of water, okay, and it is contaminated by filth. So if it's less than 216 liters and it is contaminated by filth, it's invalid to make wudu or to make ghusl with such water because it's najis, it's invalid. 
even if no characteristics have changed. I mean by characteristics like taste, smell, and color. So if it's less than 216 liters and there is filth in it, even if, even if no characteristics have changed, it's invalid to make ghusl or to make wudu with such water because it is impure. The second case is if water is 216 liters or more than 216 and there is filth in it and one of its characteristics, taste, color or smell has changed. If something from these characteristics has changed and the water even if the water is more than 216 liters, it's invalid to make wudu with such water. So if you have water, you will think if it's less than 216 liters and there is filth in it, without thinking, it has to be impure or najis because it's less than 216 liters and there is najasa in it. And if it's 216 liters or more, you will look first. If one of its characteristics has changed, it's najis, otherwise it's still purifying. So, to summarize all of this, we have three types of water. The first, purifying water, or ma'un tahur, which is water that is not mixed with anything else. It's called the absolute water, and this is the water we use to make ghusl or to make wudu. The second type of water, which is the pure water, or ma'un tahir. This water, if it's used water, the used water is pure, but we said we cannot use it to make ghusl or to make wudu. It is invalid. So the used water is invalid in fiqh shafi'i to make wudu with it or to make ghusl with it. The second type of the pure water, which is water that is mixed with something else that is pure. We mentioned like flour or saffron or something similar to that. In this case, we will check first. If this pure thing that is added to the water or to the pure water, if this pure thing, it changed the water that is no longer termed water, so it's called flower with water or saffron with water or otherwise, if it's largely changed, it's not valid to make wudu with it, so uh, it, is, it is also like the used water. If this thing slightly changed it or didn't change at all the pure water, in this case you can use the pure water such as the purifying water to make wudu. Example for that, if tree leaves uh, fell into the water and you just took them uh, away and nothing changed in the water, in this case you still can use the water. If some flies fell into the water, you can just take them off and you can use this water to make wudu. The third type of water is the impure water. If the impure water is less than 216 liters and there is filth in it, it is filthy, it is najis, and you cannot use it to make wudu whether something has a change in it or not because it's less than 216. If it's 216 or more, in this case you will check first. If one of the qualities, color, taste, or smell changed, it's invalid, it is najis, and you cannot use it to make wudu or to make ghusl. Otherwise, if nothing changed, it's still Puri, it's still purifying and you can use it to make ghusl or to make wudu. Now, if we have water that is one of its qualities is changed, okay? And this water is left until this change disappears by itself. This water becomes pure. So it is valid to make wudu with it. If the change disappears by itself, what if the change disappears by adding extra water to the water we have. It is also valid to make wudu or to make ghusl and it, it becomes purifying water. But what if this change disappears by adding perfumes or musk or some other thing to it? In this case, no, this water is still najis, so impure and we cannot use it to make ghusl or to make wudu.